hello, hello, my podcast people, and thank you for joining me for yet another episode of my favorite podcast. Today we are talking about two questions to ask yourself every time you create an offer. I'm super stoked about this episode. Uh, I didn't make this episode before because I didn't have the language around it. Right, I said this in the little beginning part. If you're listening to this, you heard the beginning. If you're watching it on YouTube, you didn't hear the beginning. But I didn't make this offer See this offer. I didn't make this episode before because I literally didn't have this the language. And I recently had a coaching call and I realized this is something that I have focused on doing for years. When I was in person, when I was online, something that I really pride myself in doing, but didn't have the language around it. And was on the coaching call and it came out and I wrote it down immediately because I was like, that's the thing. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. I literally have no updates since the last episode. This episode drops on Thursday, November 9th. Welcome to the back half of the first full week in November. Uh, I got no updates because I record Monday and Thursday's episode on the same day. Uh, But the two questions, right? Most of you listening to this are probably a coach in some way, shape, or form. To that end, when you are creating a program, whether it's in person or online, your goal is to get results, right? It's not just transactions. You don't just want money. You're like, do the thing. In fact, I would guess that the majority of you listening to this, probably all of you listening to this, if someone's paying you and not getting results, you're like, I don't want to work with you. Stop. Go somewhere else. Like, this is not, this is not what, about, what this is about, All right? We want results. To that end, when you are first starting out, all right, and you want results, do all the things, all right? If this is your first iteration, it's your first program, go ahead. Go all in. Do all the things, like have a million uh, coaching calls and like teach them all the things. You're going to learn over time that less is best and that people really need time to digest and actually implement things, right? So take that advice. But if it's your first time running something, do the most, give the most, be the most, right? Flip side of this, if you're a consumer, take the first round of people's creations because they're going to do the most and be the most and give the most and it will cost the least, right? But as you move through this, as it's your second round, your third round, your third iteration of this thing, I want you to start thinking about how do I actually get results for folks? Like, yes, think about that in the beginning as well, right? In the the first iteration, but it's easier to think about as you move forward and think about how do I actually get results for the folks? This is where those two questions come. The first question is, how do I get the outcome besides just teaching the info? How do I get the outcome besides just teaching the info? Because a lot of us, we are learners, we're teachers, we're coaches, we just want to share everything we know. We love to go deep with these things. Most people, they need more than just information. They need more than just, they need, you know, more than just being taught this thing. So the first part of that, about that though, is that this requires you to have an intended outcome, right? Because the question was, how do I get the outcome besides just teaching the info? This means you have to have an intended outcome outcome. Go back and check out, I don't even know what episode it is, but it's the seven P's of uh, creating um, something about like, I don't know, I'm trying to remember the title of it. It's like the seven P's of creating a, an offer that always sells. I don't even know. It's a podcast episode that I did. Um, and within it, it is seven P's that are required anytime you're going to create an offer. This is how I make landing pages, sales pages. Uh, I'm actually going to like flesh out an offer when I'm working with people. We go through these seven P's. And the first P, which is the most important, is the promise, right? It's the promised outcome. This can and will change over time, but you still need to start with an intended outcome, right? What is that promise? At the end of this thing, you'll be able to do X, right? Our promise is that X, like, like legacy, we promise you'll have your biggest launch, Right. And you will lay the foundation for a legacy business. Uh, for um, my Instagram intensive, it's that you will learn exactly how to use Instagram for online business. Right. And you'll never need another Instagram coach. So the second question then from there is, what is the outcome that they, the consumer, wants and how come they haven't gotten it yet? So it's two things tied together. Question one, how do I get the outcome besides just teaching the information? And the second question that kind of comes from, that comes in there is kind of a prompt is, what is the outcome that they want? Ideally, it's the same thing as the first one. And how come they haven't gotten it yet? Right? How come they haven't gotten that outcome yet? So for me, I think it's thinking about that second part there and understanding that people don't just pay for information, they pay for implementation. Right? So thinking about why haven't they implemented yet? What is the actual reason? Because there's usually a deeper reason before, besides just they don't have the information. That can be part of it. But we live in the information age. People can Google things. So why haven't they implemented it? 
What do they actually need? So from an in-person perspective, I'm going to give an example from my own background, which is rock tape. The outcome that people wanted was to learn exactly how to use kinesiology tape, right? That's one of the courses I taught. How come they didn't get that? How come they haven't gotten that outcome yet? Well, they didn't know how, right? So they didn't have the information. But the actual reason, right? Because again, we live in the information. They could just go and Google it. I think it's one, they didn't trust the source. They didn't know if they could trust the, the source. Because like, yeah, I could just Google it, but I'm going to go on YouTube and like, do I trust these people? Two, they didn't really trust themselves. They're like, am I doing it right? And three, I think the most important thing, or the biggest thing there, if I'm kind of thinking about my own, like why did I take that course in the first place, was they wanted to understand it so that they could act, extrapolate and still be safe, right? If I think about why didn't I just go and like YouTube it, because I started off with that and then I wanted to go and learn more. Because I really wanted to understand it so that I could put it in for this case and then for this case and for this thing and I could stay safe. So how could I do that as the educator, as the teacher of Rock Tape? How could I do that besides this teaching? Well, first off, we had them actually teach each other, excuse me, teach each other. We had them actually tape during lab. It wasn't just look at it, read it, hear about the theory. It was like, no, you are going to tape each other. Hope you don't have hairy legs. It's going to suck for you. You're going to tape each other. During this, you're going to feel what it's like. You're going to learn how to actually apply this. But the magic, I think what actually really got the outcome that they wanted was I, in the second half of the class, what I would do is I would break them into groups and I would assign them each group cases, whatever, whatever kind of case that wasn't in the, the notes already. And it could be as like obscure as I wanted, or it could be like pretty straightforward. Right? It could be something like de veins, or it could just be like, you have Achilles tendonitis. I would assign each group a case and I would let them come up with their own taping solutions. And then they had to teach the class. That's the thing that helped with the self-trust. That's the thing that showed them that they can extrapolate what they learned and they would stay safe, right? So they'd go and they teach and I'd be like, yeah, that's great. And I really emphasize, like, you can't do it wrong. Like, here's how you make sure you keep it safe, X, Y, and Z. That is the thing that really we had to overcome. That was why they weren't just using tape on their own because they were scared. How do I know if it's safe? How do I know if I'm doing it right? I could just teach them these things. I could just say it to them. But would they really internalize it? Would they get that self-trust? The magic then came in having them actually do it, right? And having them come up with their own solutions, having them come up with solutions to these cases and showing them, yeah, you can extrapolate. And yes, you will be safe. If I take it to an online program, right, the same concept, my Instagram intensive. The promise there is you'll know, you'll know exactly how to use Instagram for online business. The question number one, how do I get the outcome besides just teaching the info? Very simple. I have them do workshops and people do at workshops during the call. It's very important to me to actually give time during the call because I know people are busy. So... They don't actually do it because they can read it. They can like maybe maybe go watch a course on their own. They probably won't, which is also why I run live calls. So they actually have to show up and do the thing. All right? And then I give them time during that work, during that work those calls to actually workshop things and, and create the content and actually work through things. All right, so that's number one. The second question that I said to ask is, what is the outcome that they want? And how come they haven't gotten it yet? So it's just reiterating that, making sure the outcome that they want is the one that I'm promising. How come they haven't gotten it yet? I think the reason that people haven't used Instagram for online, used Instagram for online business, because that's what they want to do. Is they want to, I'm teaching them how to use it, exactly how to use it for online business. But their goal is like, yeah, I want to do this. I want to learn how to use it for online business. I think they haven't done it because they're scared. I think people are scared of being seen. I think people are scared of quote unquote doing it wrong. I think people are scared of quote unquote wasting time. So how do I overcome those objections? Right, how do I meet that head on? Well, number one, I give them singular assignments and it's exposure therapy. I'm like, you're going to do this. You're going to go and do an Instagram live and you're going to see that you didn't die and that it's okay. You're going to go and make this post and you're going to see that it's okay. I have a Facebook group where I encourage interaction and encourage, encourage people to share their stories and the people that do share, I really champion them so the, it encourages more sharing. Right? And this shows people that they're not alone. People are a bit more willing to be seen when they know that they're not the only one there. I cheer for them. Right? I lend them my confidence. So people are scared of being seen. If I show up and I'm like, that's actually a great idea and I'm not going to blow smoke. If it's a bad idea, I'll be like, I don't know about that. Right? But if I'm like, yeah, that's awesome more you. Suddenly they're like, maybe it's okay for me to be me. And they're more likely to show up in that capacity. They're more likely to be okay being seen. They have some of that confidence there. I've lent them some of my confidence. I will also, tying into the point from before, I'll share other accounts that are doing things differently and perhaps doing things in a similar vein, but doing things differently than like they've traditionally and historically seen it. 
So, right? so they see that there's other ways to do this and they also see that they're not alone. Like, oh, cool, that person's doing like that. Oh, yeah, I like that. I also believe, and this is from an account that I saw on Instagram named Trigger, uh, self-confidence starts with self-acceptance. Right? And I think people don't use Instagram for online business because they're lacking some of that self-confidence. They're scared of being seen. Uh, so if it starts with self-acceptance, it has to start with self-acknowledgement and who am I? What do I stand for? I have them start with that. I have them examine and write down who they are. We go through their values. We go through what their joy is, joys are. We talk about their desired niche. Who do they actually want to help? We talk about their core beliefs. I have them identify all these things and start leaning into this. Because I think a lot of people haven't ever been asked that. They haven't had the time to like really sit and be like, what do I want? What do I believe? What do I think? What do I feel? Like that self-confidence starts with self-acceptance. And self-acceptance is going to start with knowing yourself. And so we sit and we do that. And, and then last part there, kind of addressing the scared of wasting time. Is I just hit it in the mouth and I'm like, y'all, this is going to take a long as fucking time. So you could either wait and have it take a long time or you can start now and have it take a long time. Right? But the thing here is that, that I'm trying to get at is that I'm not just saying, let me teach them information. I'm saying, how can I get them out the outcome they want besides just teaching the information? And how come they haven't gotten that desired outcome yet? What has actually stopped them? And what can I do about it? All right, so if you are really looking to get or help your clients get results, two questions to ask yourself, when you're, whether you're making an in-person offer or an online offer. Number one, how do I get the outcome besides just teaching the info? And then number two, what is the outcome that they want? And how come they haven't gotten it yet? And then you attack it. Right? Remember, people are paying for implementation far more than just information. We're in the information edge. Yes, they want information from someone they trust, so that's a big part of it. But that implement implementation piece, how come they haven't implemented before? How come they haven't tried it? Or if they have, how come they've failed? And what can you do differently? The thing to consider here is what do they really need to be implementing? How do they need to be showing up? How do you need to be showing up for them? What do they actually need to be doing in order to get that outcome that they want and that you promised, right? Another, another shorter episode. I like these though, right? Because they feel like they're actionable. You can listen to them. You're like, all right, I'm, I'm on my walk and boom, I'm on to the next. Shorter, shorter um, episode, but that's because things don't have to be long and complex in order to be helpful. Um, so hopefully the next time you go and create an offer or maybe go back to the offer that you already have, especially if you're not getting the results that you want and think, right? Ask yourself those two questions. How do I get the outcome besides just teaching the info? Because then it could be a self-paced course, right? It could be a fucking DIY course. Number two, what is the outcome that they actually want and how come they haven't gotten it yet? Right? Read between the lines, listen around the edges, and then adjust things accordingly. If you got questions about that, or if you're kind of wondering about that, I would love to chat with you about it. Shoot me a DM, shoot me a text and be like, yo, I've been doing it this way. I've been running it this way, but you know, I think that this is the outcome that they want. I'm not necessarily getting it fully, or this is a problem I think they're really having. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about kind of changing things in this way. I'm thinking about maybe holding classes in this way. I would love to riff on this with you. I really, really love offer creation. I love kind of looking at the nuts and bolts of things and then, you know, taking a step back and being like, okay, but how do we deliver this thing? What is, how does we have, how do we have to show up for this person? Maybe we have to call on people more and maybe we have to highlight people more so that they actually understand that and they're not going to die. Maybe we need some more exposure therapy in there. I don't know. Depends on what the goal is, depends on what the group is, depends on what your offer is, so many things. So if you want to riff on it, would love to riff on it. Shoot me a DM, shoot me a text, 310-737-2345. It'll be me. It'll be green because I'm a sideline, but it'll be me. All right. All right, no reviews to read because it's literally 20 minutes after the last time that I recorded. Um, but as always, would love a review if you want to leave one. Would love a rating if you want to leave one. Preferably five stars, but your choice, right? Autonomy is sexy. All right, we're going to wrap it up here. As always, endlessly, endlessly, endlessly appreciative for every single one of you. Until next time, friends, maestro out. <laughs>